Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy, the show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors, and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to improve flat autumn images with the help of Luminar Neo tools. If you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of the video, follow the link there and download the sample files. I should also mention that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Autumn Bundle. All the assets we're going to be using for this project are coming from the bundle and it offers more than 720 autumn tools for Luminar Neo. If you want to find out more about it, make sure you follow the link in the description or visit our website cleverphotographer.com. So this is out of the way and we can start with the edit. First, import the main image, click on it to select it and then click on edit on the top of your screen. You can also use E on your keyboard to move into the edit module. Now looking at the image, obviously the colors are quite nice. However, we have this whole amount of overexposed sky, which doesn't really add any interest. And in overall, the colors aren't great too. So let's see what we can do with the image. First, we need to adjust the sky. There is too much white and too much brightness that brings all the attention towards it rather than the rest of the image. So we need to replace it. Now, when we're talking about sky replacement, white sky is actually really easy to replace. In fact, it's one of the best sky you can replace. So for this, we're going to be focusing on our main toolbar. And here we're going to be going into the creative section and the sky AI tool. Click on it to open it. And then inside of the tool, click on the sky selection button. This will open another window. And here I want you to click on the gray drop down box on the top of the library. It should say all skies, but it maybe say something else. Just click on it. You will get a list of different folders with the skies. You maybe don't see exactly what I see on my screen. However, the first few folders should be the same for all of you as they come with the application. What we are looking for is the all skies. So just click on it to make sure that we're there. And now use the wheel on your mouse to scroll all the way down to the list. Once you're at the bottom, you will see a button with a plus sign on it and I want you to click on it. This will open a new window. And from here, I want you to navigate towards the sample files where you can see the moody full sky. Click on it, select it and simply click on open. This way it will get imported into the application. I already have it here, so I have another option. However, all I want to say is say replace. So that will replace the original file and it will automatically be imported into the application. Once you do that, the sky should be also applied to your image. And as you can see already, the difference is huge. We can navigate back to the tool and use the little shortcut here with the eye icon to see the before and after. And the difference is really massive. You can see before we just have a lots of bright white, which takes all the attention away. Once we replace the sky, we can see lots of nice texture with a different contrast and it really improves the image. Now we need to adjust it. It's not perfect. So for this, we're going to close all these little sections and start from the top. When I use the sky AI tool, I really like to go from the top to the bottom. So let's start with the sky orientation. Click on the section to open it. And here we can adjust the horizon, vertical and horizontal position. So with the horizon position, I want you to keep an eye on the actual sky here. So what we want, we want this to be hidden under these trees at the bottom. So we're just going to slide it down until it really goes behind. So something like this. 
Now we can also adjust the vertical position. This is really up to you what you want to do. Me, I want to make sure that we're using just the sky. Again, when you go too high, you can see we see the edge of the actual sky. So we want that to be hidden behind again. So something like this. With the horizontal position, you can play around with it. However, I'm quite happy with what we have. So I'm just going to reset it. Anytime you want to reset any of the sliders, just double click on their name and they will reset to zero or their original value. Now you can also use the flip option here when you want to flip the sky around. However, looking at the direction of the light, I'm quite happy with how it looks. So I'm going to leave it alone and close the sky orientation section. After this, we're going to jump into the mask refinement. The Sky AI tool already did quite a good job. However, looking at some of the details, let's quickly jump into the fixed detail slider here and increase it a little bit to just add a little bit more towards the little details on the sky. If you want, you can play around with the global or close gap sliders to get the perfect result. If you're looking for a full tutorial on how to use the Sky AI tool, we have the full video available on our YouTube channel and you can watch it right now. Once we're happy with it, again, we can close the sky refinement and move to the scene relighting. Click on it to open it and let's start with the relight strength. This adjusts the brightness of the sky together with your main subject or the original image. Let's see how it's looking. We want to increase it a little bit and that way all of this gets a little bit darker and just match everything nicely together. After that, relight saturation. It tries to match the saturation of your sky again with the rest of the image. So let's have a look. I think maybe just somewhere around 22 is looking good. We have no humans on the image, so we leave the relight human slider alone. Again, we can close it and move to the reflection. It's not really visible now. However, again, if I use the before and after, you can see some of the reflection gets applied to the actual water here. We can adjust it with the reflection amount. We can completely remove it or we can really push it up. I don't want to overdo it because we get some halo after it. However, I think somewhere around the 50 actually looks quite nice. Once we're happy, again, we close it. Double check sky adjustments options here, but I'm quite happy with what we have. So we don't need to use this. So close it and we're going to move on with the edit. So we are happy with the sky replacement, so we can close the tool, apply it to the image and continue with the edit. The next thing we want to do is to adjust the saturation and the colors of the image. Now this can be done multiple different ways. However, I like to use the mood tool for this example as it's quite simple, but still very powerful. For this, again, we're going to be using the mood tool. So we are still in a creative section of our main toolbar. And then we navigate somewhere in the middle where you should see the mood tool. Click on it to open it. And here you can see the choose LUT drop down box. Again, click on it. And you will see some of the presets here, which comes with the application. However, I have gave you two LUTs as a part of the sample files and you can use them. So let's click on add custom LUT file and navigate towards your sample files. You will see two LUTs here. One is called Cozy Fall LUT and the other one is called Scary Halloween LUT. You can select both of them and then just click on Add. It takes a moment and then they get applied to the image and also imported into your list. So click on Choose LUT again. And let's see, we have the Cozy Fall LUT. So let's click on it to select it. And sometimes to see the full effect, you need to increase the amount slider somewhere higher on the list. You can go all the way, but sometimes that's a bit too much. So let's just go somewhere around 70 or 80 and see what we have. So that's very dramatic. However, there's a lots of green in it. So let's go and see for the scary Halloween, which is way too much here. But when we bring it down, it actually looks quite nice. Let's have a look at it somewhere around 30 is looking good. So let's see before and after and we have so much more drama on the image we can also adjust the contrast of the lut effect so we can bring it down or make it stronger for us we leave it the way it is and with the saturation we can make the saturation of the image stronger here or bring it down a little bit for us i think just maybe minus 10 is looking good for this example let's have a look before and after it's all much more moody and more dramatic once we're happy with the result, we can close the mood tool, apply it to the image and move on. 
At this point, once again, let's have a look at the before where we started and let's have a look at the after. You can do that by clicking on the preview icon on the bottom of your screen. Again, before and after. And so far, I'm quite happy with the direction we're going. However, I think what's missing now is a little bit of rain. So for this, we're going to be using the Layers panel and the power of overlays. So let's navigate towards our Layers panel, click on the plus sign here, and then click on Load Image. From here, navigate again towards the sample files, and you will see the rain overlay here. Click on it to select it, and then click on Open takes a second and it will be added to my images on the top of your layers panel. Again, click on it to apply to the image and you will see in a few seconds it will be added to the top of your layers list. So now we have the original image and we have our rain here. Now, if you want to see the full tutorial on how to use the layers, we have many of them. All you need to do is to jump into our YouTube channel. However, what we can do, we can of course increase the size of the overlay now we can zoom out a little bit. We can do that by using command on control minus, and we can adjust the direction of the rain by using these little arrows. So let's increase the size. Again, push it around a little bit and get something like this. Once you're happy with the direction of the rain and size and make sure that it covers the entire image, we can turn our attention towards the layer properties. Here in the layer properties, what we want to do is we want to increase the opacity to 100 and it becomes all black. You don't see anything. So to adjust that, we want to go into the blend modes. So click on the gray drop down box and change it from normal into the screen. Once you do that, the black disappears and we just have a lots of rain. Now this is a little bit too strong. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to our opacity slider and just bring it down to the level we like. So I think maybe somewhere around 40, maybe 45. It really is up to you. Once you're happy, you just hit enter on your keyboard and that's that. So now we have a rain. So what we have done, we have changed the sky. We have adjusted the colors and we have added rain. But of course we are not finished. Let's finish the effect and let's use even more tools in Luminar Neo. Now we want to make sure that we're working on the main image. So let's go back to our layers panel and here make sure that you select the original image. You can see which of the layers is selected as it has the blue frame around it. So for us, the original image right here, blue frame, and we can go back to our main toolbar. Here we're going to continue and now we're going to add a little bit of a fog or haze. For this, we're going back to our creative section and here we're going to click on the Atmosphere AI. Open it. And first we need to select which of the modes of the Atmosphere AI we want to use. If you want to click on it, again, it opens. Now, Fog and Mist are generally in the top part of your image. Layered Fog and Haze are in the middle and bottom part of your image. You will see what I mean in a second. So for this, let's see if we can use maybe Layered Fog. And what we want to do is to increase the amount. So let's push it and you will see how the layered fog is coming from here. However, it's very little. So to adjust that, we want to use the depth slider. So when we increase the depth slider, you will see the layered fog is starting to come from here. I'm not 100% sure about the layered fog. So let's change it and see if maybe the haze looks better. And I actually like the haze much more. However, I think it's too much of it. So let's see with the depth, if we can bring it back a little bit. And then with the amount slider, if we can remove the overall effect even more. So I think something like this, again, play with the depth. And that's about it. Now with the lightness, the fog haze, or however you want to call it, can be really bright. That's when it's 100%. Or it can be really dark when you bring it down. So for us, I think just somewhere around 90 will look good. Again, always double check the before and after. And I think it really adds nice feel to it. So maybe with the amount down to 70 and we are almost done here. So I'm happy with the tool again. Let's close the atmosphere AI to apply to the image. And we have one more tool I would like to use and that's the dramatic tool. So here again, we are still in a creative section and we're going into the dramatic tool. Click on it to open it. And here we're not going to do anything else other than just increasing the amount slider to the point where we like the result. So I think maybe 
somewhere around 10, double check before and after, or maybe 15 before and after, and it's looking good. Now let's zoom in to see the entire image, close the dramatic tool, and let's have a look at the before and after. So I think that the difference is huge. And as you saw yourself with the help of few tools here in Luminar Neo, we have taken image that was little flat and boring and turn it into dramatic, impressive result. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website, cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Give. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.